Okay, you guys, I think it's time to get hyped for yet another laptop release. And I say yet another one because in one of my previous episodes, which I'm going to be linking somewhere around here, I've been talking about the RTX 30 series laptop GPUs, which are going to be paired with AMD's upcoming 5000 series CPUs for laptops, of course. And those are definitely going to be interesting. But I think this time around, you're going to be more excited for the RX 6000 M series of laptops, especially if you're on a budget. So stick around for that. And if you're new to my channel, then hi, my name is Alex and I run a channel called The Red Elk, where I happen to cover quite a lot of news about the latest things in tech and gaming. So if you'd like to keep yourself up to date, then definitely get subscribed. Now let's talk about the RX 6000 M series of graphics cards, which are going to be based on the very same RDNA 2 architecture. And the latest leaks are pointing out to those being based on the Navi 23 and Navi 24 chips. Now, if you remember, the RX 6700 and 6700 XT, which I covered earlier this week, are based on the Navi 22 chip, so the naming scheme for those mobile GPUs might be the 6600, 6500, and 6400, and of course, M at the end. And names aside, what's perhaps more interesting is that AMD is choosing to cater to the entry-level segment with those graphics cards instead of going for the high-end, as opposed to what NVIDIA seems to be doing at this point. And I say that because Patrick Shore mentions that the TGP for these new mobile cards would all be under 100 watts, with the Navi 23 having targets of anywhere between 65 and 90 watts. For Navi 24, it should be anywhere between 25 and 50 watts. Now, these cards should technically be bringing similar performance to the 5700M that we've seen last time around, but with, of course, less power consumption, so perhaps we ought to see some more battery life out of those laptops, and once the whole human malware is long gone, next year, two years from now, who knows, you're actually going to be benefiting from this lower TDP. Now, VRAM configuration might also be something very interesting, and after all, we've seen everyone talking about it, but... That's for more demanding titles, and AMD is also allegedly going to be using 12 gigabytes on these yet undisclosed cards, but to be fair, I wouldn't worry too much about VRAM configurations on lower end to mid-range graphics cards. And it remains to be seen what the laptop manufacturers will decide to do with those uh, graphical chips that they're going to get from AMD. Because as I was saying, you will be able, well, they will be able to configure them with 65 watts up to 90 watts. And of course, you can see different laptops from MSI. Let's just name a random series, the Bravo series. You might be able to see that with 65 watts. And then you can see a laptop from Asus configured with the very same 6600M graphics cards. Let's just give an example. Configured at 90 watts and you're going to get better performance out of that depending on the cooling and whatever special sauce they're adding to those cards. Now, we're most certainly going to be able to hear more about or learn more about those uh, laptops, those mobile graphics cards and their CPUs, and we're going to get into that really soon at CES 2021, where Dr. Lisa Su will be holding a keynote, and I do expect her to be talking about those things as well, since NVIDIA will, of course, also be talking about the RTX 30 series laptop GPUs at that time. Now let's just go and talk about um, the upcoming 5000 series mobile CPUs and namely the 5900HX. Now I talked about the 5800 and 5800U in some of my previous episodes, but this one looks like a total Intel killer and you're gonna find out more about it really soon. The 5900HX is based on the very same Zen 3 architecture that we've been seeing on desktop CPUs from AMD, and those have been great so far, minus availability. Oops, sorry for that. Now, <laughs> we've seen this chip being clocked at 3.3 gigahertz with a boost clock frequency of 4.6 gigahertz, and AMD is also doing something great by including 16 megabytes of L3 cache compared to the eight on the 4000 series of chips that we've been seeing last year. Now, aside from that, AMD is also including enhanced Vega graphics on those chips, but to be fair, I would not expect you to benefit a ton from that because I don't expect to see laptop manufacturers only including a 5900HX without any discrete GPUs, but hey, if that happens, then at least you're getting some better graphics out of it, but I would most certainly expect you to also get a discrete GPU or get an eGPU in this case. Either way, that's neither here nor there because um, laptop manufacturers will also be able to decide if they want to go with the 35 watt or 45 watt version for this chip. So yet again, as in the case of um, the RX 6000M series graphics cards, you're going to see different laptop manufacturers 
going for different configurations and you're going to see some that are better than the others despite having the very same chip inside. So yeah, that blows. However, we've seen Asus doing a totally bonkers configuration with 48 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clock at 3200 MHz. And Asus, what are you doing at this point? Like, I'm, I would not be surprised to see if that they're going to combine this with an RTX 3080 graphics card and bring some totally insane results. And speaking of those great results, we've seen the 5900HX being able to score over 1400 points in Geekbench in single-threaded performance workloads, and we've seen it being able to hit nearly 7000 points in multi-threaded scenarios. Now this is definitely surprising, but perhaps what's even better is that AMD might finally be including overclocking support on those mobile chips, and something really great is that the Intel 10700H, Intel, what are you doing with those names, first of all, is going to be 25% slower than the 5900HX that I've mentioned in both single-threaded and multi-threaded scenarios. And if you're Intel right now, this might be really scary. I don't know what to tell you else, because in one of my previous episodes, I was talking about how Intel is losing by a long shot in, in Germany especially, and if you want to see that video, you're gonna see the thumbnail for it on screen right now. Definitely do make sure to check that out. But as I was saying also in my RTX 30 series mobile GPUs video, I would expect most people to go with AMD next year around if they want to get the best performance and also perhaps better battery life because, uh, yeah, Intel is also working on their um, super efficient um, laptop CPUs, but to be fair, if you want great performance, great gaming performance in this case, or if you want to do editing or whatnot and still get good battery life out of those laptops, then I think you might be going with AMD. And do make sure that you're going to find out more about those laptops on my channel, so definitely hit that subscribe button if you're interested. And I would also expect to see AMD uncover all of the details about these laptops at CES 2021 like they're going to be doing most probably with the RX 6000 series, so stay tuned for that as well. And my last question would be, or like my question for you in this case would be, if you had all the money and you knew what these laptops are going to be able to do, what their configurations will be like, would you go with AMD and Nvidia? So 5900HX, let's say, and an RTX 3080, or would you go with Intel, so their top-of-the-line mobile chip and an RTX 3080, 3070, or whatever, or would you stick with AMD and AMD? So do make sure to let me know in the comments down below because I would definitely be interested in hearing more about that. And like I was saying, if you would like to hear more about technology and gaming, then do make sure to come back next time. <laughs> Either way, this has been Alex with the Red Elk. I thank you guys a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.